Hello everybody, it's Cree Rama and I am here today to show you what my process of doing eco dye is. I was very um, intimidated by this process. Even though I loved to tea dye, coffee dye papers, there was something about eco dyeing that, um, I don't know, it just felt like such a huge process. So I want to show you how easy it is. There's a lot of different things from your yard, um, a lot of different leaves. If you use flowers, just keep in mind when you put your pages together and sandwich them, um, you know, you want them to somewhat be able to squash down and so that it's not all lumpy. Um, also use a lot of different types of paper. If you have watercolor paper, and I have tried the inexpensive watercolor paper, from the Five Below store and things like that, and it works just fine. So um, thicker paper or cardstock. Also, don't forget to add in some fabric. Um, so anyway, I want to show you my process of how I do this, but first I'm gonna show you some of the results. The first batch that I did, I'm gonna show you some of the, the blue. I used um, fabric dye, RIT fabric dye. So these are, let me make sure I'm in screen perfectly. So these are some of the blue. Now in all of these, I did three different batches and in all of the batches I used the same um, plant material. I used two different leaves from my yard. I used huge hosta leaves and then these are from my Japanese maple. So. And I believe, I think these are um, my hydrangea bush, pretty sure. So anyway, here is one here. You can see this is a small hosta leaf. I have some that filled up the entire page. It's beautiful, I love the Okay, so the hosta leaves did had a lot of different results, um, and you'll see, I guess it's depending on where it is in the layer, but here's one, here's another one that's a little darker, love that color in the middle though, and this one you can just see a lot more of the striations there. And then here's another one with the Japanese maple. And those are the purple, they have purple leaves. So there's always like a little bit of a different color depending on what I'm mixing it with. Okay, so my second batch, I decided to add, cause I thought that was, I loved, I love blue, but I decided to add a little bit of yellow um, that I had left over and I didn't like the yellow on its own and I thought hmm Let me just add that and maybe it'll make a sort of a teal greenish color and it did and I love this batch This batch was all cardstock that I used So I just thought they came out so nicely There's Another one there and honestly, just just get in there and experiment, really. Um, now, okay, let me talk about, I use the RIP, RIP fabric dye, as you'll see. I'm sure you could use different things to color the water, but the thing is, I boil it in my house. So you would wanna make sure that whatever you're using is not toxic. Um, but I think you can get a box of the fabric dye, the little, the crystals, and it's relatively inexpensive. Another one there. So you can see how all the hosta leaves, they all are slightly different. I really love this one. I think this is my favorite hosta leaf one. Another one there. So as I was doing this, and pulling off the leaves, my father-in-law said, well, wonder if you can reuse the leaves. And I thought, hmm, since the leaves are a little bit bigger and thicker, I tried it. 
So these are, I added a little bit purple, obviously, um, dye. Now what I will say, I used regular paper. I think that definitely makes a difference. Not regular paper, I'm sorry, it's 28 pound paper, which is the, the lowest uh, weight I would go for sure. Um, but the plant material, you can reuse it if it's like a holly bush. Those are the, you know, thicker sort of waxier leaves. Um, my hosta leaves kind of stuck to the pages, like re really stuck to the pages. Um, so I had to dry them and try to get them off. Now this one turned out okay, but a lot of them were, were really light. I didn't have a lot of purple left. And so I think a mixture between, you know, the, the lighter paper weight, reusing plant material and not a lot of dye. It, I mean, it was definitely, it's nice. Just didn't turn out as wow as the other ones, with the color and everything. So this is it. And now I am going to show you the process. And as always, if you, oh, here, I also put in a little bit of uh, string with my navy. This is very, very navy. So if you um, try this out, some eco dyeing yourself, I would love to see what you do and um, you know what your results are and what you tried. Uh, come over to Junk Journal Divas and join me in the Facebook group. We have a lot of fun stuff going on there every month. We have different events and swaps and things. So Thank you so much for watching. So for this part of the video, I have to do voiceover because it was a bit windy outside, but here I'm just showing you the different leaves and plant material that I gathered from my yard. So watercolor paper definitely turns out the best in my opinion, but I don't have any at the moment. So I'm using 28 pound paper and a lot of cardstock I used. So you're basically just going to sandwich the plant material in between one sheet at a time. And I just sort of press it down as I go. Now what I use is an old roasting pan, so I, because I like for my papers to lay flat. So the layers that are gonna be in the pan is you need something to protect your papers at the bottom. I use a screen, but you could use some sort of a grate, and then you put your stack of papers on top of that. And then on the very top, you just need something heavy. I use cardboard, and then a weight on top of that to hold everything down. So next I'm showing you um, the screen that I use at the bottom of my pan. You wanna put something there to protect the papers from burning. Then you'll see on the top, I put my layer of cardboard and I put a paver stone on top as my weight. Um, but I've got some water here and I have my fabric dye. So I want to just add this to some water first rather than just dumping the dye into the pot. So I'm gonna do probably, probably about half of the packet. Just fold this up tightly, put it back in the box. 
then I want to just dissolve this, give it a good stir. And we can add more water to this. Um, I just want to make sure that the powder is all dissolved and kind of distributes a little evenly. So bring this over. And then I'm going to pour in here. Okay, let me get some more water. So now I'm going to add a good like cup and a half, two cups of vinegar, and then I just let it soak for a little while. And this is, I usually tie my papers together, but honestly, since I have this big rock, I really don't think that I need it because it really sandwiches them. Um, but if you, that is, uh, you might have to do that just to keep your papers really tight together. I'm just kind of swirling around here to make sure it's all and distributed and you can see that great color and we're just gonna let this soak so let it soak for about an hour okay so I just started boiling a bit and once you once the water starts to boil then just turn it down um, so that it's just at a, a low boil simmer and you leave it for an hour. Once the pot cools, I'm just showing you here, I take the papers out and remove the plant material and I just lay them out on my dining room floor and I put a fan on them and let them dry. After they're done drying, I do go through and iron the papers um, if they need it. Okay, everybody, I'm back for round two. I got more. I really love using the hosta leaves because they're so big. Um, and they're really nice and flat and they leave a really nice design. And then I just got some more of the holly leaves from my yard. And these are from my hydrangea stack of paper. And I'm just going to start again sandwiching.
So that is my process. I hope I encourage some of you to try eco dyeing. It's a lot of fun and absolutely gorgeous results. I love using the RIT fabric dye because it's kind of hard to mess it up and you get great color. So get out there, see what's in your yard. Don't be afraid to get your hands messy and experiment with the process. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to hit the notification bell and uh, like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching.